not really fair to compare a car show to a bike show, is it? Well, this is the tale of two shows, as it continues for part two of Time for a Change. We'll see if it does. Let's ride this. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. This was the famous opening of the novel *A Tale of Two Cities*, and I think it's perfect for this *Tale of Two Shows* to start it off. Waking up today, we will go to the car show first. Then, waking up tomorrow, we will go to the bike show. Now, it won't be fair to compare the car attendance numbers to the bike show, because the car show here in Canada is a week long. Where the bike show is only three short days. We had press passes for both of these events, so we got an inside look for the first time at the car show. What was startling right away at the car show was the over 1,200 reporters that were there. And how important is the press day at the car show? Well. Richard Hammond showed up for approximately four hours just to drive a two million dollar car onto the stage briefly, then talked with the owners, then flew back to England. Must be tough to have a life with a schedule like that. And yes, it was big and bright and well lit and laid out nicely in three different halls. But what I was more impressed with was the amount of independent reporters. A.K.A. influencers or YouTubers, and what was not too impressive at some displays at the car show was the fact that there was zero dealers there. They had so-called product specialists that we were actually able to stump a few times with questions that should have been known. Their job seemed to be to get your email address into a database as everyone had their iPads out and was trying to sign you up or. Something free or another. One of the biggest draws was at the Porsche display. It was of a car that doesn't even exist, unless you play Gran Turismo, because it's one of the cars from the game. So they made a full-scale replica of it, and it looked like the future. We came back to reality and looked at everyone else's cars, and there was something. Noticed the amount of young people that were there and what they were all over. It was the Teslas, and nothing else, because it had the one thing they all understood—a massive touchscreen with apps. And with that, it was over to the bike show. And of course, it was like landing at a small craft show compared to the car size, with only 26 of us present from the press. The overall impression I got from each display was very muted enthusiasm about the new models. They all seemed tired and were ready to go home, and the show hadn't even opened up yet. Okay, here's a new bullet. On the other hand, I will give it to them: the product specialists that were there did know their stuff, as well as the dealers that were present and working the bigger booths. We did see some Kawasaki reps quickly whisk through the show, unable to give me a comment, and left quickly. I guess they were checking out what they were missing, possibly, because they had seven brand new models to show. Seven, and they didn't even bother to come. No companies or the show staff really wanted to go on the record about why the manufacturers still weren't there. I'm sorry to report. The only other disappointment was not being able to see the Honda's new CB750 Hornet. And after talking to the reps, I had to roll my eyes at the reason they didn't bring it to North America, U.S. or Canada. And you can blame a certain car company called Dodge for that. You see, they own the rights to the name 
plant in North America. And somebody didn't want to pay for those rights. But Honda did show the refresh of the CB500X, becoming the new NX500. It was an interesting look, with a new bigger screen. I hope the riders will enjoy. As well as the new reskin of the CBR500R with nice HRC color scheme. Royal Enfield introduced their new bullets, aka motorcycles, and a small reveal. It was a little hard to see and film because the booth did not have their own lights set up, so it was kind of in a dark spot against the wall. And the promo bags that the press got, well, they were roughly translated into Bullet My Love. The pretty was there with the new 457, which felt extremely light. I hope it will be durable enough, as the ride reviews are already coming out of India. Close to 427,000 at the last count, but once again, we're doing it for them. For free. Suzuki had the new GSX-8R as well, and it seemed to be getting good attention. Unlike the poor Queen of Speed, Hayabusa, who was sadly tucked in a corner being ignored. Harley was there with their biggest sales force and their new sporty bagger model, which was on display for us and shortly in the public. The only dealership that made their presence known with a booth was GP Bikes of Oshawa, bringing a few brand new BMWs and Ducatis and other brands that didn't bother to show up. But we almost missed their bikes in their area because it was hidden behind their own accessory wall. Lots of riding schools and a few racers did show up as well. And sadly, the Clutch Society and the Toronto Motorcycle Film Festival were also missing from the show as well. And with all that being said, once again, the size was smaller as they closed in the walls by another third. But what did I feel and get from this bike show? Well, it was a large sense of becoming more of a meetup with friends that you haven't seen for six months or even years. They were all talking with each other, looking at bikes, but mostly just hanging out. As a YouTuber, that's a whole other thing to blog about. So I can see, possibly, the show changing from being about show and tell, and more of a meet and greet with your friends in the middle of winter. That's just my opinion, but I think they should be pushing it. Remember back in the day? What was our favorite thing to do? Go to the mall and meet with your friends. Check out the record store, play a little video games, get a cheap lunch. It was perfect. Today, the malls have changed. Some to overpriced excessiveness and others to abandon empty spaces. But we seemed to have more time back then, didn't we? Time to go to a mall. Time to hang out. Now that we're older, there's more distraction. When life gets in the way, it feels like we have a lot less time. Because the faster tech got, it didn't make our life easier. We struggled to keep up. So maybe the shows should start pushing the emphasis on being together with friends again, as riders. As riding is more intimate, and we share that knowledge with each other. Besides, how many car drivers do you see wave at each other when they pass? Not too many. But bikers? Bikers will wave at a total stranger, always. Because we get it. It's about the journey to the destination and back again. Lots safe out there.